Hello there everyone and today we're taking a look at data types. Kind of sounds boring and I know that's kind of true but um, it's also interesting because we can see how Grasshopper manipulates those, how you can create those and also what you have to kind of keep in mind when using them. So let's get started. So basically speaking, those are all available data types that exist in Grasshopper. They're um, in its rough form available under params, geometry, and also at primitive over here. Um, so basically we're talking here about point, vector, circle, circular arc, curve, line, plane, rectangles, boxes, B-wraps, meshes, mesh faces, surfaces, twisted boxes, geometry, fields, group, tra and transform, and under primitives, it's boolean, integer, number, text, color, complex, which is, I don't really get that much, but it's kind of like negative uh, squared numbers, culture, domain, uh, domain squared, so like, yeah, GUID, matrix, time, data, data paths, file paths, shaders, and bitmaps. So, Let's go one by one and see how those are actually created. A point. A point is created by simply having constructing at this point with three different number sliders. Constructing a vector. Constructing a vector, you need two points. Those then get combined and then you have a vector between those points. As you see here with those three numbers. A circle. A circle you define by a plane, by a base plane that you define and also a radius. This then defines a circle. If you have an arc, an arc gets defined by normally three points. There are also different ways of creating them, like with this one or any other kind of like arc segments. And with that, you get to create an arc. Very simple. Pull line. A pull line is a combination of points that can or cannot be close as well. For example, here. And those that, that then represent a curve, a pulley curve, a pull line curve. A line, two points that connected, get to connected together and then they create a line. Very simple, just two pieces. A plane, a plane gets constructed by having a base point and then having two axes that are defining this plane that you see here, the green one and the red one. And this is in the output. A rectangle, it's kind of like a plane, but it can be a little more interesting because um, it is a physical representation, like like a polycurve, but it has some interesting properties because, because it's more uh, easier to manipulate. A box is basically like a rectangle, but in 3D and also with like a Z axis. A BWAP is like all kinds of surfaces, boxes, all meshed together basically. You can put basically whatever in here and it still counts as a B-Rep. And a mesh sphere, which kind of is like a, for example here in our case, just like a mesh that has like those triangles and the quads. And that then get represented by um, the amount of vertices and the amount of faces. Um, a mesh face is in, on the other hand, a thing that shows you where those with which vertices a mesh face is formed in this case. Then what else? A, 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 a surface. A surface is basically just a, a, an amount of points that get, get connected together. They normally would be four, so that, that way you can define a mathematical surface. Twisted box is kind of like a box, but like twisted as it says. And a geometry can basically be whatever you want. Okay. Now a group, a group is just a collection of whatever that gets grouped together that you can afterwards also very easily ungroup and get the same thing out of it. A transform, transform basically is a way of how an object gets transformed from one state to the other. So let's continue with the primitives. A Boolean can be true or false. An integer can be a whole number not one point something, a whole number. Number can be anything, a number at least, also negative, but yeah. Text 
a text can be a text, how you write something down, but it can also be a number as well. We get to that later. A color, three values defined in RGB. And also, if you want, have a you know transparency layer as well. Culture, where you right click it, and then you set culture. For example, by linguistic family, you want Japanese. Then let's go with Japanese. Let's go. Konnichiwa, everyone. Um, a domain. A domain from till. So we have uh, something and the other one. By the way, I can all start with a bigger number. Then a domain that is actually like two dimensional. So we have two of them, basically, and they create a more complex domain. Can be very useful for surface manipulation sometimes, actually. A GUID, that's basically, I'll show you this. I have this object here, right? And this object has a global um, user identification. And this can be seen under details here, under this ID here. And this is the same ID as in Grasshopper. So that's how you can reference something like that. So that's a cool way of, you know, referencing a thing. Mm, what else? You have a matrix, which looks like this. You have rows and columns, and it just gives you an output of how the matrix looks like, but you can use it sometimes really well for some more complex mathematical uh, functions. Then you have time. It's time, right? What time is it right now? It's a little bit later than that. But you can also go way beyond that. Anyhow, data can be literally anything. Just put it all together and it's fine. Grasshopper works with trees. So if you create someone, you can basically get the data paths out of there. So always kind of like with the circular brackets open, zero, then semicolon, and then the number you want, and then semicolon close. That's how you define the data paths. Then we have also file paths, which you can put in via text, for example. And then you also have shaders, which are kind of like colors, but they're a little bit more advanced. You can actually put textures on there as well, but it's a little bit more complicated. And just bitmaps. And actually, I didn't never use this one, but you can set it and set a bitmap, which is great. Anyway, now I want to kind of look into how you can manipulate from one thing to the other one as well. So for example, I create a point and yeah, I want to show like how you can create those, manipulate those, make them more simpler, but then also go back the other way. Okay. Okay. So let's say you construct a point. This point then gets two axes which constructs a plane. This plane then creates a box. And this box is also geometry. And this, then it's also a B-Rep, obviously. And if it's a B-Rep, you can take the faces and those faces are surfaces. And those surfaces can be put into curves. And from those curves, you can get the endpoints and those endpoints are then again numbers. <laughs> and it's basically just a bunch of numbers. And then you go back again so you have the points right and you create with the points you create the polyline which then will create a rectangle which then if you use the correct ones you can actually create the same box again how we had it here in the beginning like it goes back and forth like that uh, yeah and obviously this box can also be just a rectangle or a um oh here actually didn't do it correctly, but that's fine. Um, it can also be a B-Rep as well, if it's correct. However, in this case, it's kind of, uh, yeah, distorted as you see, <laughs> anyhow. So now I wanna kinda get into the manipulation of primitive as well, which this also counts for uh, normal computer programming for kind of manipulating and um, getting from one thing to the next one. So we start very simple, just with a boolean, which can be uh, uh, like be true or false. This boolean can also be represented as an integer, as I said, and so it's just whole numbers. And as true means one, as zero means false. This integer can obviously be also be a number, 
But this number, for example, then can also be um, added something. So, um, oops. If you would take this number and add like 0 0.5 or something to it, it would still give me a result. Whereas if I would add this to the integer, it would actually be still be one because it rounds always to the side, you see? If it's over five, it rounds up. So be careful with integers, they're always rounding. And I don't know if they actually round the exact same way of how like the rounding way works, but they just round uh, the way they want to, kind of. There's a more complex de uh, definition of that. Anyhow, a number can also be a text and this text can be represented uh, in a way like that as well. By the way, those numbers can also be transformed into domains, which then would create a domain. Instead of constructing the domain, it just creates a domain from zero till the number that we are uh, were choosing before. So like this, zero, two, four, four. So now the other way around. So we created text of something, right? And this text can be converted into a number and this number can be, be converted into an integer. However, for example, if I change this now to 0 0.49, here right now it was, um, well, now it's two because it's 0 0.4, but if I change it to 0 0.5, it will be three. So be careful with that. And then this integer can also be transformed to a Boolean. So, and everything above one is always true and everything at, um, zero is always false. Actually, we wanna try something out right now pretty quickly because I'm not sure if we have a negative that this would also be counting as uh, false. So yeah, apparently only zero is false. Even minus one is actually true. Just zero is false, which is nice, cool. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. This is already it. Uh, I just want to go very quickly through it and kind of show you how we can create different data types and different geometries, different representations of geometry, which all in the end can be always transformed into its normal state. However, it's always good to work with the geometry you always want to use. So if you want to have a domain, then create a domain and use it further. So yeah, thank you much for watching. And I hope you like those videos. Let me know and see you in the next one. Bye bye.